transitioned into coaching and consulting in 2012 after his 11 year career as a financial advisor. All right. Um, uh, first of all, uh, I want to uh, say thank you, thank you, thank you very much uh, to Shannon. Uh, Shannon, you are doing not just aid work, but you're doing a great work. And so uh, I believe I, I speak not just for myself. I believe I speak for all of the speakers, all of the guests, and all of the sponsors. Uh, you are doing something, obviously, that's bigger than all of us. And so in that, I say thank you very much. And I say hello to all of the speakers all of the sponsors and all of the guests who are in your mix uh, this evening. And so it's indeed a pleasure uh, to be here. How many of you by a show of hands have seen or heard of the popular TV game show, The Price is Right? You can just wave your hand as they say, like you just don't care. If it's one thing, that inspires me about The Price is Right, the popular TV game show, The Price is Right. It is when the public announcer says, Judith McGee, come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. Because he says it with such passion and with such enthusiasm that the contestant has no other choice but to believe that they're not just there for a moment. They're there to have an experience and an experience of a lifetime. It reminds me so much of you and I this evening. You and I didn't just come to have a moment at the fifth annual cancer recovery conference. We didn't just come to have a moment. We came to have what I call a lifetime achievement experience. I would also like to introduce you to an, another popular TV game show called Unplugged Potential. Just as there are risks versus rewards with The Price is Right, so are there risks and rewards with the popular TV game show, Unplugged Potential. I would also have you to know that without risks, there is no opportunity. So if everybody can write in the comments section, without risks, there is no opportunity. Without risks, there is no opportunity. I would also like to bring to your attention a particular term that we use in the field of counseling called arrested development. Arrested development. Arrested development is defined as an uninvited particular person, pla person place, or thing that has entered into your life to put a stronghold on your progress towards reaching your highest and best potential. It is an uninvited particular person, place, or thing that has entered into your life to put a stronghold on your progress of reaching your highest and best potential. As relates to reaching your highest and best potential, it is indeed a fact that there is an enemy that comes to rob you of reaching your highest and best potential. And that enemy is yesterday's success. Yesterday's success. Therefore, I encourage you this evening to take your successes and put them in a file cabinet and visit those successes as needed. Because those successes, believe it or not, could put a handicap on your, your ability to move into your next. And no matter what the situation looks like, no matter who says what, no matter who does what, you will always have a next. The question is, what does your next look like? What does your next look like? In fact, I, I, I want to encourage you to write that in, write that, write that in the comments section uh, here this evening. What does my next look like and how am I going to get there? What does your next look like? Because you got a next. Uh, it's one thing to allow a particular situa situation or circumstance to put a period behind your name. It's another thing to allow it to put a comma behind your name. And what does a comma do? A comma indicates a pause. 
it indicates a pause. So what is your next and what does your next look like? Having said that, are y'all ready to make some money? You can just put your thumbs up, throw your hands in the air, one or the other. Are y'all ready to make some money? Because we're going to play a game. I'm going to shift screens to uh, some slides that I have. And you're going to see how all this connects together as it relates to the popular TV game show, Unplug Potential. Unplug Potential. Today is the day that you're going to unplug the potential that's down on the inside of you. What does unplug potential mean? Unplug potential is what you haven't done yet. Unplug potential is that power, that purpose, that skill, that talent that lies dormant down on the inside of you that you haven't tapped into yet. So as I, there's always going to be a next where you are concerned. The question is, what does your next look like? And how bad do you want it? Moving forward, you will see that behind every door to the game of unplugged potential, there's a, val there's a value added benefit, meaning that you have the opportunity to win cash money. In fact, I would like for everybody to write in the comments section an I statement, and that I statement is, I am a value added benefit. I am a value added benefit. The first door is self-concept. What you believe about you. No matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstances, the question is, what do you believe about you? If it's one thing that this pandemic has done for me, it has allowed me to take a look at my belief system and what I believed about me and what I believe God was saying about me with a clear-cut understanding that my core values are attached to what I believe about me and my belief system. So the question is, what do you believe about you? No matter what the situation is, no matter who said what, no matter who did what, no matter who came, no matter who left, uh, the question will always come to be, what do you believe about you? And what is that worth? That's worth $5,000. It's worth $5,000. And it's not a person on, on, in, in the room or in, in the room this evening who could not use $5,000. And if you, would, you were to say that, you know, I got more than enough money, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to take yours and mine too. And I'll be excited about counting it. So behind the first door is self-concept again. What do you believe about you? It's critical that you put yourself in a position to be able to take a look at your belief system only to discover what's important to you. Let's take a look at the next door. And the second door is self-knowledge. What you know about you. If it's one thing is for certain and two things is for sure. When you get up in the morning, just like myself, you get up in the morning to you. When you go to bed at night, you go to bed at night to you. I recall a friend of mine saying unto me uh, not very long ago that he was going to divorce his wife. A question. I said, where are you going? He said, I have not decided. I said, well, then that's more the reason why you should stay. I said, because wherever you go, you're taking you with you. And regardless of what the problem is, Perhaps you're six, at least 60 to 70% a part of it. I also serve as a transformational life coach as well as a business coach. And in summary, I always ask my clients, could it be that things are the way they are for you because you are the way you are with you? Why? Because it all starts with you and it all ends with you. So self-knowledge, what do you know about you and what are you doing in your recourse of living to find out a little more about you? Because if you don't know all that there is to know about you, you cannot offer you to somebody else, which is one of the challenges and one of the problems that my friend had who was in, seeking to get a divorce. 
he didn't realize that wherever he went, he was taking him with him. And what is that worth? $10,000. So there's a value added benefit to everything that there is to know about you. And it all start with you, starts with you and it all ends with you. There's a value added benefit where you are concerned. And nothing in the world can talk you out of knowing you. Nothing can talk you out of knowing you. So embrace that and be willing to ask, answer that question 365 days of the year. What do you know about you? As the, as the saying says, how are you going to love somebody if you don't first love yourself? Let's move to the next slide. Behind the third door is self-esteem, what you feel about you. And what is that worth? The value added benefit to that is $15,000. What do you feel about you? Oftentimes when we talk about goal attainment, I often ask clients to tell me of a goal, a particular goal that they had an opportunity to achieve that made them feel good. That made them feel good. Because in asking them to do that, it gives me an opportunity to void all excuses of them not tapping into their highest and best potential. It gives me an opportunity to void all excuses. Because normally when a person feels good, good about a particular person, place, and thing, they're willing to talk about it. They're willing to laugh about it because there is a sense of excitement that comes with it. So therefore, I encourage you that whatever it is that excites you, I encourage you to keep it in front of you. If it's the pursuit of higher education, keep it in front of you. If it's, if it's the pursuit of a special relationship, keep it in front of you. If it's the pursuit of buying a new house, writing a new book, Keep it in front of you. Keep that process in front of you. Why? Because it makes you feel some kind of way, which in return will elevate your self-esteem. It will elevate your self-esteem. And you have to believe that and receive that, that you are entitled to feel good about you. You don't have to get permission to feel good about you. You are, that comes as an entitlement to feel good about you. And whether it's you or myself, we shouldn't have to depend on somebody else to make us feel good. The fact that God woke me up this morning was enough to make me feel good. The fact that he allowed me to, you know, eat a meal today was enough to make me feel good. And I'm sure you would agree with that. And what is the value added benefit to that? $15,000. Let's take it. Let's move a little step further. Behind the fourth door, self-image, resulting from how individuals see you. And what is that worth? $20,000. Self-image. What is it that you see? What, is you, what does your ideal self look like? What does your ideal self look like? What does your ideal business look like? What does your ideal relationship look like? Remember, one of the things that I said is that there will always be a next concerning you. There is a familiar quote that uh, you and I are agreement with where it is said, there is more to me than what you see. There is more. There is more. The question is, what does more mean to you? Not what it means to the next door neighbor, not what it means to your boss, not what it means to the people that are on your team, but what does more look like to you? How do you define more? In fact, I would ask everybody to write in the comment section, what, is my, what does my more look like? And how do you define it in the comment section? And again, the value added benefit to you discovering you as relates to your self-image is $20,000, $20,000. So thus far, we went from self-concept to self-knowledge to self-esteem, and now we're looking at self-image. Self-image. Each door serves as a connecting bridge to a bigger prize 
called the four drive model of unplugged potential. And what is potential again? Unplugged potential rather? Unplugged potential is what you haven't done yet. Unplugged potential is that power, that purpose, that skill, that talent that's lying dormant down on the inside of you that you haven't tapped into yet. Therefore, it has to be a next. And again, the greatest enemy to you unplugging your potential is yesterday's success. Yesterday's success. If it's one thing that this pandemic has shown me and shown me quite clearly is that one, my successes or the same thing that got me to, and perhaps even you, to that $100,000 a year job is not the thing that's going to keep me there. Therefore, I'm also in a position to be able to share with you that the norms that you were once acquainted with are no more a part of your life, whatever those normals were. Because you see, whether it's you or myself, you and I cannot just navigate through life and through business, through relationships, just based on perception alone. No, nah, that doesn't work like that. Because perception is nothing more than information and data that appear before you. And in some cases, it is information and data that has appeared before you, not once, not twice, but maybe three or four or five times. What I am asking you to do is to take your perception and merge it together with your perspective. Why? Because your, your perspective is the thing that aids your vision. And what is a vision? A vision is an image of a coming attraction. I am a, um, a movie person. I love going to the movies. I love sitting up in the theater with a, a box of popcorn lead with butter and a fruit punch and Sprite mix. I just love it. <laughs> 